Hello everybody, welcome to another exciting issue of the Rick and Dave Comic Book Hour. I'm Rick. I'm Dave. And in this issue, we will be going over the Amazing Spider-Man Movie 2. I know it's a couple weeks past due. So we went and saw this movie in 3D. Yeah. And what were your impressions of the 3D? Well, most 3D movies I don't really care for because I don't see the big wow about it. But this one, they actually did use it pretty well. And Spider-Man jumping off the buildings and stuff, he kind of popped out of the screen a little bit and and uh, kind of gave you a little bit of that over-the-edge feeling and whatnot. So I enjoyed that part. And so, you said there were a few times you thought he was coming off the screen. So. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what always it looked like to me anyway. So it's always a good sign for a 3D movie. Yeah, and like the Godzilla movie, which there was no 3D. Uh, <laughs> so. I liked this movie, and I guess I liked it because they were able to introduce some characters without having it feel flooded. Yeah. Yeah, for as much as they had going on here, this is a clutter-free movie, I guess, in a sense, since they still had three villains going on, and it would, but it wasn't like Spider-Man 3 was, where it was just one big pile up and just got really weird. But this one here, I thought they flowed it pretty good. They focused on Electro as yes. the main villain. And then uh, they kind of introduced Harry. The only problem, that whole Green Goblin thing is probably the only part of the whole movie I didn't really care for so much, just how they handled that. Yeah, that might have been a little bit rushed, if anything. Yeah, that was quite a bit rushed, I thought. But. Because, I mean, I, they set it up early why he needed to get a cure, and he thought yeah. spider Man blood would do it. Let's go back to Electro. Uh, Max Dillon there, played by Jamie Foxx, did a real good job on this. Uh, we talked about this before, we like this Electro, though it's not this Ditko Electro with yeah. the big hat, that, you know, the big, yeah, the big spikes yeah. on his head. Electric bolts coming out. But I, but I would think for, for this, not that we're in this millennium, that this was a, yeah. a good take on the character. Yeah, I enjoyed this take. I mean, uh, I thought it was more believable. And, uh, you know, for as a comic book movie goes and so I enjoyed it I thought it was pretty cool he kind of had motivation to why he was he's kind of a kept to himself kind of guy anyway and and I don't know what the terms are for all that but a little over possessive or whatever yeah needy kind of person yeah and I like the way that they you know I know that people complained about this how they were doing that drill, but still like you mentioned when, when he got his powers, you know, how he lit up, his veins lit up. Oh, yeah, you can see his veins, and he's all crackling, and I thought the effects were really cool in that. So. Yeah, might as well go with the whole nine yards with the ultimate universe that the Spider-Man's from. Kind of, whatever hodgepodge they're putting yeah, together here. Whatever version this is, this movie verse is kind of cool, I think, so I like it. But, and so, uh, a little intro with Rhino at the end, is, since we're on the villains, it, it was pretty cool too, so it wasn't all... Well, the reason it wasn't so clever is because the Rhino shows up at the end, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. And we have to go back to, this movie was a little bit more Parker Quinn. Relationship yeah. yeah, it was more of a Peter Parker movie, maybe more so than Spider-Man. Although I think it balanced it pretty well. Yeah, and they so, did. I mean, I mean, if you read the comic books, that's really what it is. It's Peter Parker. You're reading about it, you know, and he's all the trouble he gets himself into in one fashion or another, or and happens to him. And, and that's all here, starting from so, the very beginning. It's so just, that's just the way Parker, you know, yeah. is the way he is and the way things go and and whatnot, so I thought it was pretty cool. And I like the portrayal of this squid. I mean, they they make her look current, but also could let her look retro like she did back in the 60s and 70s when she was in the comic book before she died. Yeah, the clothes she wore and the fashion and her attitude and everything. Yeah, Emma Stone, did a, I think she makes a good Gwen Stacy. Yeah, she did. She did real good with that character. So they did, of course, offer and uh, not off a bridge, but off a big tower, so, you know, one version or another, but she still yeah. fell. And yeah, so she did die in this movie, unfortunately, so that, don't know. Uh, there were some, I don't know if they would call them Easter eggs or what, but we saw, you said you saw maybe 
the vulture. Yeah, one guy looked like the vulture in the movie. That's right, and he was part of work for Oscorp, I think. And then they had Felicia. Yeah, she was a lawyer for be, Oscorp, and, and she's working for it. So that's a maybe they didn't black give her, cat. Yeah, they didn't give her a last name, but yeah. we're figuring that she might show up in number th the next movie, maybe. Yeah, and maybe she'll be the new interest instead of introducing Mary Jane, which I would rather yeah, see. Yeah, I, I think they. You, would you rather see Mary Jane? No, I'm sorry, oh. I didn't take it back. Oh, I'd rather see. Felicia than Mary Jane. I yeah. Mean, we had three movies of Mary Jane, so. Yeah. Which was good. I mean, that was. Yeah, I got two fun movies like that. But. Uh, and also, another fine promo performance by Sally Field as Aunt May. Yeah, she's the best Aunt May. I like this version of Aunt May. She's just holding up and not so old that she's like, you know, having heart attacks every other minute or something like that. But, yeah. And, and uh, they had a real nice scene with. Aunt May and Peter. Yes, they did. And uh, so, you and know, he was trying to find out the truth about his parents. I mean, it's also movie delves with some of his parents' stuff that from the last movie, when, you know, why they disappeared, what happened to him. Yeah, we find a little bit more out yeah. what's going on with uh, his folks and what ha what happened prior when he was little and everything. So, And the thing about this, Mary, about this Aunt May is that she's not fragile or you think she's going to fall down and die or go to the hospital for six months yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I think this one actually knows that he's Spider-Man, but she's just not saying anything. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, you, people aren't stupid. I mean, when you're coming back all bruised up and, you know... And coinciding with reports of this guy swinging around town, but, you know, Flash isn't going to be beating on his that bad every day, but I think she kind of knows something's up, but she's not saying nothing. But she is worried. Yeah. So she's worried about a Spider-Man and him digging too deep into his parents' mystery, which I think is pretty cool. And I mean, that tied into the movie, too. We find out more about them, and as you, if you watched it, you know what that's all about. And if you did, well, then it's still out on the theaters, I think. And yeah, this Andrew guy is playing Spider-Man. I, what I like about him is that, or at least, yeah, yeah, yeah Garfield, so I'd like to get it, is that uh, the way they write him, this is more of a Peter Parker than McGuire. He's, he's funnier than the other guy yeah. like Tobey Maguire. Yeah, McGuire was more he, he's sullen little, and yeah, like he more wasn't... serious or whatever or something. Yeah, but well, Par uh, McGuire was too busy trying to figure out ways to take off his mask. Yeah. And I have to give kudos to this movie. I don't think he took his mask off that much in this. No, he's not ripping it off all the time like McGuire did. McGuire ran was all the time. But he has the snappy comebacks, he has the humor, you know, everybody knows yeah. that he's a smart-ass dick while he's out there battling. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there was too much of Flash this time, either. No, maybe in the graduation air part. Yeah. Maybe. Another thing is that if you're into Stanley cameos, this was not his strongest one. <laughs> no. But he was there, so... Yeah, he was. It was more fun than the first movie than this one, but... Yeah, but he's... Maybe of course, was... he has to stick his ugly mug in there somewhere, so... Yeah. Well, we created all those guys. We stick our ugly mugs in there too. Yeah. So, really, you know, we didn't give away too much here. You know, Electro's origin was kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, we did. They did mention uh, Doctor Smythe. Yeah. So he was also mentioned in the movie. Yeah. So. And they did leave the foundation of who was going to be building a Sinister Six, if that's what they had. Yeah. They gave a lot of Easter eggs or whatever was all in there too couple scenes, so we'll see how that pans out. Yeah. Well, that new character, Mr. Fear. Perry does figure out that Parker Spider-Man because Gwen is tagging along, helping him. Yeah, so he put two and two together pretty yeah, easy. But just, and they're both the same battle scene. <laughs> it's like, what, you know, it doesn't take yeah. much. And So, yeah, and they, with Harry taking the serum like he did, kind of setting him over the edge so he is legitimately crazy. Yeah. So, he might, I think this guy could will play a good Green Goblin, I think. Yeah. But I think he just his origin and how they did it in this movie is a little bit rushed and and suddenly he's so hating Peter, his one of his old buddies, you know, yeah. which I think was a little. Well, you have you to know. realize he thought that Spider-Man's blood was going to cure him from a genetic disease that killed his father, which happened at the beginning of the movie. And later we find out that the only, well, there's a reason that. 
Perry and others can't use that venom to yeah. heal themselves and drives them crazy. And you'll find that out in the movie if you haven't watched it. That's pretty neat how they explain that. So I think that a lot of stuff got explained pretty well in this movie. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they did well in that, I thought so. And I'm thinking of just doing a Sinister Six. This could be more than a three movie arc. Oh, I, I can't see them. Have to be. I can't see them do it. I mean, yeah, they're going to have to fit up all in one movie in three. It's going to look. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be a train wreck. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. If they try to do too much in the next movie, that'll be. They need to pick a villain, focus on it, and do maybe like a Rhino and introduce another one a little bit somewhere along the line. Yeah. But I mean, they do some kind of setup in the you know a villain that he's concentrating on, and then have the other ones kind of forming in the background or something, yeah. and then the fourth movie is all nothing but one big fight scene. You know, <laughs> Ninety minutes of smashing yeah, and doing an Avengers type of thing or something yeah. there. Anyhow, so, so about it. Yep, I highly recommend this movie. Okay, and I do too. So we'll catch you later. Bye. Spider Man, Spider Man does whatever a spider can.